So today I went strawberry picking because I have two great recipes I want to share with you. The first is going to be a simple strawberry syrup um, and the other one is going to be a homemade strawberry crisp using the strawberries that I went to my local strawberry farm and picked. As you can see I'm cleaning, holding them, getting them ready for the recipe. Welcome to my kitchen. If you're new here, my name is Brandy, and this is my channel called Sewing Back. Um, today we're in the kitchen because this video is actually taking me three days to make. It started on Thursday afternoon when I went a couple uh, counties north of where I live to um, LCCL Strawberry Farms and went strawberry picking. And um, I think that they grow an heirloom variety of strawberry. I think they're called a cameo strawberry, if I remember right. Um, what they told me last year when I asked them about all that. And so I went um, and enjoyed the beautiful weather and picked some strawberries. So <clears throat> I got those on Thursday. And then late last night, I went ahead and essentially processed I got them all washed up I had them hold and sliced for what we're gonna make today um, so our first recipe is from all recipes this was submitted September of last year by Daniel Maynard I hope I'm saying his name right and it had really great reviews so this is the recipe I wanted to try and use I've never made this before um, so this will be new to me, but it seems pretty, pretty easy. So I've got my little saucepan here and I need to get two cups. I'm going to get two cups of my berries out and these are super duper ripe. So if I like this, I may go back up there and get some more berries and figure out like if I can do this where maybe I freeze it. Um, since I didn't read such great reviews about canning it, I don't know. So we'll see. So I've got my two cups of strawberries because I'm gonna throw a couple more in there. All right, so we're gonna move this out of the way. I also went ahead and preheated my oven because our second recipe is um, we're going to do a fresh homemade strawberry crisp and this one came from mums the numbs the word dot com strawberry crisp and again this one was like top in reviews and I thought it sounded good so I thought well we'll do both of these so I've got my strawberries in here I need to add one cup of water, I mean, yeah, one cup of water and one cup of sugar. So <clears throat> this is a half cup measure because it fits in this jar. And this is just organic sugar. And I'm not gonna do less sugar because, I mean, it's a syrup. And we will see. The other thing you can do with this, <laughs> which if you've ever made strawberry jelly, um, the foam that you, or not jelly, but jam, the foam you skim off, you can put in milk and make strawberry milk. Oh my word. It is so good. And so I'm going to get this going and I'm going to go ahead and pour my water in. Kind of coat my strawberries a little bit. Pour our water in. And... And so it says you can use the syrup to make strawberry milk. So if that is something that you or your child loves, you can totally do that. So the directions say to combine the water, the sugar, and the uh, strawberries in the saucepan, bring to a boil and boil for 10 minutes. Then we're going to reduce the heat and let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. In the comments, some people said it took it more like 20 minutes, so we will see. But we're going to get it going. And that's essentially it. That's how easy this one is. 
So when it comes to this boiling it for 10 minutes, you have to stir it constantly um, during this portion of it. And um, I believe in the recipe, it suggested that when all is said and done, that you strain out the strawberries if you want a just the syrup. But I saw in the comments, most people said they like to take their immersion blender and blend up um, the strawberries and keep them in it because they like the little pieces. So depending on if you're more of a jelly kind of person, even though it's not a jelly, but where you don't have those pieces in it, it's just like the juice, or if you're more of a preserved jam kind of person, then you might want to keep the pieces in. Um, it was kind of mixed between, and I'm thinking because I'm a jam kind of person, like I think those little pieces would be delicious. So I think I'm gonna, when we get to that point, I'm gonna take my immersion blender and just blend that up really well um, for our syrup. Now, if you were doing this strictly for I guess like the um, the milk, or if you're gonna make strawberry milk or kombucha, you may not want the pieces of the strawberry. Um, so, the, you know, just depending on, also a lot of people get plain seltzer water and then they add some of this and that's how they get their flavored seltzer waters. Um, so again, you have to decide, you know, kind of what you're doing it for. I'm doing it, this one, this batch more for the crepes and just to have on hand um, or to put on ice cream or something like that because that's another yummy thing to put it. Strawberry syrup on is like some vanilla ice cream. It's so good. So, so for this batch, I'm going to leave this part in. I may end up making a second batch at a later date, I probably will, and I will probably strain that one. Okay guys, so um, it says the first thing was to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which I have my oven heating up. You need a nine by nine square, this is deep dish pan. I like this because if you don't have a ginormous family, you know, this is great. So that, you know, you don't like eat the whole thing. <laughs> so, it's a more manageable, and I still have strawberries left over, and I also have some fresh blackberries I got on special and blueberries. So I'm thinking about doubling this recipe um, and making a like a nine by 13 pan um because we have potluck tomorrow at church and so i'm thinking i might do that um we'll see so it says to spray your with cooking spray your dish this bowl i took a fourth of a cup of sugar i used organic sugar it says white sugar but that's what i have so that's what i'm using um and i think the big difference is, is just this is a little bit um bigger grain it hasn't been as processed but it'll be fine I put some cornstarch I know some people don't like cornstarch um, it's what I have I think you could use tapioca starch if you um, wanted to do that I'm just using what I have and it says to mix them up and then we're going to coat this mixture with our strawberries so let's do that now So you just, this is to toss them together like so. Okay, so we've got that done. So now we've, we've tossed it in with the fourth of a cup of sugar and the cornstarch. It was two tablespoons of cornstarch. If you're using frozen berries, it says to use three tablespoons of um, cornstarch. And now we're going to put our berries in our bowl here. Yeah. 
pour it like this, hopefully. I won't make a mess. Okay, we've got that in our pan. All right, so now it says in another bowl, we'll set this to the side. We need to get, we need to mix our flour. So we need um, a third, no, we need one cup. I'm gonna use einkorn, all purpose flour, because I have an abundance of it. So I need one cup. So this is a fourth of a cup measure. So I need four of these. So that's my cup of flour, and then I need um, half a cup. Oh boy, hold on. This lid. Ooh. Okay, that one's newer, so it likes to stick. So this one I need half a cup. This is a third of a cup of my oats. So I'm gonna put that, and then. A little bit more. I don't think I could really mess that up. Okay. Then we're going to get our sugar again, and we need a third of a cup of sugar, of white sugar. So this is the organic sugar. So I need a third of a cup of this. And I've got two bags I'm trying to finish up of the brown sugar. And then I need a third of a cup of it, which I think is probably what I have in this bag. Ooh, yeah. You can call that one done. All right, so we've got that. Then we're gonna need half of a teaspoon, no, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna get my little spoons out. All right, so we need fourth of a teaspoon of salt and half of a teaspoon of cinnamon. All right, so we got all of that in there. And now we just need to mix this all up and kind of get that brown sugar broken up. I don't want to make another one of these yet until I taste it because <laughs> I've not made this recipe. You know, you don't want to take something to the church potluck and you're like, mm, that could have been better. I think it sounds good. Like I said, it had lots of great reviews, but you know, you got to check those things. Okay, so now that's incorporated. We're going to add the melted butter. Mix it well. But I have a backup. If this one is, if I'm kind of like it's, it's okay. I have um, a backup cake <laughs> kind of thing I was thinking about making. So, um, so yeah. Okay. So we have this. And now what are we supposed to do? So now we're supposed to pour our oatmeal mixture on top of our berries. So let's bring our berries back. And. I think what I want to do is I don't want to just put a big glop of this on top. I think I'm going to get like my cookie scoop and kind of scoop. Well, I guess I could just use this. Let's just kind of 
see how this goes. So it doesn't have anything raw in here that you can't taste. So, however, with my own eggs, I would taste it anyway because I trust my girls. So I'm gonna taste this and see what I think. Mm. It's not bad. It's not super sweet. I've had some where like they're like crazy sweet. This one's not too, uh, it's not overly sweet. So that's promising, because I do try, even though we're doing two sweet things today, I do try not to go nuts on all that. Okay, so I know it doesn't look necessarily <laughs> great and appetizing right there like that, but now it says we just put it in our oven, we bake it for 35 minutes or until it's golden brown and, and the berries are bubbling. So that's what we're gonna do. And it says you serve it immediately when it comes out with ice cream. Um, yeah, I don't have ice cream, so I guess I'll be trying it without ice cream unless somehow ice cream magically appears by the end, by the time it comes out of the oven. Our sauce has a couple more minutes. It's been simmering for about 20 minutes. It definitely has reduced down. And <laughs> it looks so good. So, because um, if, if you wanted to strain it, this was, you would use this to strain it. And I guess you could take the berries and like I said, you could put them on, do like an ice cream night or something if you wanted just the syrup. But because I'm doing this for these crepes, I am going to use my immersion blender here. take the foam off if you want and you can mix this in some milk and make strawberry milk oh it's so good but I am gonna put it in my little jar and some people said it's a little watery um, so if you want it thicker um, it, you could put like some gelatin or something in it I'm out honestly this is fine for me I think it looks wonderful and I have a jar that I'm going to put it in and what we don't use um, will just go in the refrigerator. It says it stays good in the refrigerator for several weeks. Probably just like um, a refrigerated jam. If you were going to do that, you weren't going to can it up. And like I said, I believe you can, like I said, you can can this. What I believe it was, I forget the headspace, but I, it was like 15 minute processing time. Um, but like I said, what I read is that it lost, um, a complaint was that it lost some of the strawberry flavor. So if you've ever done that, if you agree, disagree, whatever, let me know, cause I would like to know that because I would love to be able to get the strawberry juice and can that for like future kabucha or like a craft soda, something like that. So let's get this in our jar. Let me see if I can move you out. There we go. And and I'm just leaving the foam and all. So this is not a huge amount. You you would you would want more if you were going to can. I heated up the crepe the way she told me to do it in the microwave. And this one is just plain. It doesn't it's no flavor or anything. So I'm just going to take some of my strawberry syrup and you know what would be really good with this is if you have like some 
um, at my farmer's market, they do this lemon um, goat cheese that's oh, so good. That would be so good smeared on this. And so now, so I have it like this, and I'm gonna roll it. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of the strawberry, I'm gonna drizzle some more of this. Ooh, that's hot. You could do some powdered sugar. I don't think I'm gonna need any powdered sugar, but I want that little piece of strawberry there. And these were in the field on Thursday, and I picked them. So let's give it a taste. <laughs> oh, my word. Could put a little, <laughs> you could put a little whipped cream or something. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh man. That is so good. Oh. I will put this recipe. I put a link to his recipe. It's an all rec all recipes, but it has his name, his name was Dan Daniel something. And um, yeah, this is so good. This would be so good on biscuits. Oh, yeah, oh my word. Okay, look, I've got, I've got it all over me. <laughs> so, wow, very good. I can see how that would be really good. I don't know if I would mind the, the berry bits in the kombucha or not. I don't know if that can mess that up or not. I need to do some more reading, but. Mm. Or on ice cream. You could put that stuff on just about anything. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my. So I'll be back in a few minutes when our crisp comes out and we will see how that looks and give it a taste. And so I will catch you back in just a bit. So that the top looks like golden brown, but, and the, the, the fruit bubbled over. So let's get a little bite. Cause no ice cream did not appear <laughs> while this was being made. So let me get a bite that has some topping in it and I'll tell you what I think. Well, the first thing I can see is this is pretty watery. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Let me get a paper towel. It's very hot. Hang on, it's hot. Hot. It tastes good, but it's not that cr that like granola y crunchy crumble I wanted. So no, I'm not taking that to church. It would be good with some ice cream, but I want a crisp that is crisp. That's not really crisp. I think I may stick it back in the oven and maybe see, give it another 10 minutes and see if it crisps up a little bit because it's, it's not raw, it's doughy, um, which I wondered because it was a cup of flour to half a cup of the oats. So I don't know. So, but as far as the, the taste, that part of it is delicious. It's just, if you want more if you want like a doughy top um and some people like that i wanted more of a crispy 
top. So I'll have to go back to the drawing board <laughs> and look for a different crisp top. But if you have one or you know of one, if you would let me know in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, cause I don't think this is it. And, um, so yeah. So anyway, um, I thank you for watching <laughs> and, um, I hope that you get out and get you some strawberries as we're in strawberry season and we want to eat seasonally. Um, whether you go pick them or you get a good deal in the grocery store or whatnot, or maybe you're growing some, I have some we're growing. Um, but I never get enough off of what I grow to do anything like this. They're just kind of for snacking and uh, trying to keep the birds off of them. So I love going up to this, the strawberry farm and, and picking and they're always so good. So anyway, I thank you for watching. If you are new here, we would love if you would consider subscribing to our channel. Um, if you found value in this, we'd love a thumbs up. Um, with that, I will see you next time and have a great day. Bye.